Hey guys, we're out here with Will Petty again. Uh, he's going to run us through a couple of drills that you guys can do at home to keep you pushing forward. Uh, will you going to go ahead and just walk us through what we're going to be running today? Yeah, so the first one's going to be an RDS um, drill, right? We'll be running on the Triarc 2011 mounted with a Trigicon RMR. Um, there are a lot of benefits to running an RDS uh, on a handgun. Uh, one of those is that it allows the shooter to be target or threat focused, right? Mm -hmm. So unlike traditional iron sights where the shooter has to be front sight focused, uh, the shooter now can look past that through the dot and actually focus on um, what they're shooting at. There's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why that's better, uh, both from a defensive and competitive standpoint. This is a drill that I developed uh, while working with Trigicon on the SRO, and uh, I think you guys will dig it. Awesome, let's get to it. All right, so guys, this is the uh, RDS uh, target focus drill. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking through the uh, optic and actually reading the script. Now I chose a little, a little bit of my favorite here, TLC, right? So don't go chasing waterfalls. The goal is for you to read the script and then not shift your focus to the dot when it's time to shoot. Okay, so we've got a couple of uh, orange dots up there. You can shoot it once, you can shoot it two times, you can shoot it five, however many times you want to shoot it, right? The goal is really to get your eyes to focus through the dot to the script, right? So we're again, we're, we're shifting our focus from the front sight to being target or threat focused. I'll show you how it works. You gotta read it out loud doesn't have to be in key, certainly it's not going to be with me. Let's give it a go. Here we go. All right, here we go. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. I know that you're going to have it your way or nothing at all, but I think that you're moving too fast. TLC. Again, just give it a try. What we're trying to do is train the eye to look through the dot and focus at what is downrange. You need to do this from about, about three to four yards away uh, because the entire script or the words need to be um, um, be able to be seen through the, uh, the glass. So whatever you're using, uh, however big your dot is. So we know behaviorally from an evolutionary standpoint, um, individuals, people are threat focused in violent encounters, right? And in fact, we spend the entire academy process trying to break them of that and get them to focus on the front sight, right? With red dots, we can now use that behavioral, um, instinctive threat focused attribute in our favor, right? So now we can get guys to actually see what is going on with that threat as that threat's moving, identifying, is it a shoot, a no shoot? Um, and there's just so many benefits to that, right? And so that's what uh, RDS is allowing us to do. The downside is, is that if you've spent the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years shooting irons, right, we've now got to reprogram the brain to focus on what is going on downrange, to actually see through the optic, right? And this is a good way to force people to actually read uh, with a cognitive understanding of what's going on. And then if you catch yourself shifting to the dot when you press that trigger, you know you're you know you're doing it wrong, right? So again, what we should see is the eyes focus clearly on the words as we're reading them through. We get to the dot. That 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 vision is now still looking through the dot and target focus. Hopefully, it works out for you guys. Give it a try. Train hard. All right, guys. Will here again with Centrifuge Training. Want to walk you through a couple of drills. The next one we're going to be working on is working from inside the car out. Now again, less than ideal. Right? So this is definitely the low frequency, high consequence arena, meaning that it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's bad, right? So we don't want to be figuring out the, the minutia of what makes this work well uh, when, it's, when it's go time, right? When it's for all the marbles, okay? So 37% of, of law enforcement is getting ambushed while seated inside the car. We also see a high frequency of civilians being engaged uh, while getting in or out of the vehicle, right? Um, and that engagement distance is very close, right? We know this through statistical data. We also know that on the civilian side, it's a crime of profit, right? So they have to be either close enough to verbalize what they want or to physically grab it, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of things. The sequence of movement inside the car is the same as the sequence as the, of the movement on the exterior of the car. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll look, right? So we'll visually pick up, not only is it a threat, so is it a shoot or a no shoot, but where is that threat located? 
okay? The next thing we'll do is we'll figure out where does the gun go, right? So if I've got no one in the car, it's pretty easy to drive the gun from A to B. If I've got wife, kids, or other occupants, now I've gotta figure out how do I get that gun from A to B while driving around that person. Then the last thing that we'll do is we'll shift the hips. A common thing that we see is where guys will just kind of wave the gun out right here. And we're not seeing very, very good hits uh, on the threat. So again, remember, hits on bad guy make the threat stop, make the threat go away. So what we're looking to do, right, what we're looking to do is to look, so visually pick up where that threat is, and if it is a shoot, figure out where the gun goes, so how do I get the gun from A to B, and the next thing that we'll do is we'll shift the hips inside the car, right? So you'll notice that from the waist up, I'm building just a normal shooting uh, platform. Now the context is important here, right? Ever, like if you can drive away, drive away. Just realize that that doesn't, that doesn't make the bad guy stop shooting at you. Um, but everyone knows how to drive away. If you can get out of the car, get out of the car. But everyone knows how to get out of the car. Not everyone has the, um, the, uh, the reps into how to drive the gun inside the car, especially if it's around other people, right? So we'll give it a go, and then we'll work it all the way through exterior to the vehicle of the car. So once I engage that threat, I'm now gonna improve my position out of the car. Obviously you could drive away if that's if you had the ability to do that, but traffic and um, um, things of, the, of that nature also play a role, okay? So again, this is a drill, not a scenario. I'm gonna look, figure out where the gun goes, break the hips, engage the threat, we have two different threats, a driver's side threat and a passenger side threat. I will then deck the gun. So you'll see a lot of people will start to do this. They'll start flagging themselves or other people as they work seat belts and door handles, right? So I, wanna, I want to uh, firmly deck the gun, right? So if I'm on the passenger side, that would be on the dash. If I'm on the driver's side, let's go ahead and deck that on the steering wheel. Reach over, undo the seat belt, undo the car door and get out. People often ask, well, why? Why are you not taking the seatbelt off first, right? When we look at these engagements, we're living in that five second world, right? Video after video after video show us we don't have a lot of time. And in looking at the data, right, 0% of all officer involved shootings were solved with a seatbelt, right? Zero. So the, the gun makes the bad guy go away, uh, not the seatbelt. This is a task, not the priority. The priority, priority is the gun, right? All kinds of substantiating evidence and data to show that that's the sequence of events that need to occur but uh, let's just get into the meat and potatoes of the drill itself. Ready? All right guys, so we talked about uh, driving the gun while you're the only occupant inside the car. Um, becomes a little more technical once we start putting family members, my beautiful wife here, right, kids, uh, co-workers, things like that, right? So let's talk about how do we drive the gun um, to the threat, right? So just like when we're on the range or shooting in a house, right, we have to be online, okay? So what you'll see a lot of guys do is they'll look, so they'll identify this threat over here, they'll shift their hips, and they'll drive the gun like this. The problem is, is that that muzzle is not past his meat, meaning that I have not earned the shot, I've not fought for the right to party, right? The Beastie Boys died for that shit. So what you're going to have to do, all the steps remain the same, except for the fact that you're gonna to have to over-exaggerate and bridge your hips across this occupant to now drive the gun past him, right? In doing so, we'll also pin this individual in place. So let me show you what this looks like dry and then we'll do it live, okay? So this is the way it would look. I'd identify the threat, right? I'd realized it is actually a shoot and I'm not able to drive away or get out of the car, okay? From here, the gun comes out, right? I've gotta figure out how do I get the gun from A to B, right? So this is, this is a clean lane right here, right? I will then bridge my hips and push against either the car door or the frame or the floorboard of the vehicle, right? When I do that, I'm gonna drive the gun past him, right? So if you guys wanna come around, you can actually see the positioning of the gun, right? So now what you'll notice is that the muzzle is actually past the meat, right? I've earned my shot, right? So, and then we're also applying body pressure to this individual, right? So now I'm pushing against the structure of the car and I'm keeping him um, as out of the way as possible, right? So as I neutralize this threat, the gun will then become 
decked on the, uh, the dash or the steering wheel. We'll exit the car, drive away as needed, right? Hope that makes sense. You guys train hard. We'll show you what it looks like live.